But in terms of actually identifying a deal, the best thing you can do is, you know, think about the industry that you're going to be acquiring in. It needs to be an industry where you can build rapport and empathy with the business owner. So it helps if you know a little bit about the industry or perhaps some of the key characters in that industry or the latest scandal that's gone on in that industry, because that's going to really help you in that in that rapport building part of the of the process when you first meet people. For guys listening to this who, uh, I guess, you know, want to start to get into the market to, to look to acquire acquire businesses, what, what's your view on, on business agents? And it's a bit of a leading question because, uh, you know, I mean, I, I always you know, come, come across um, uh, either business agents contacting me to say, oh, that business you own, we can flog it for you at this price. Or, you know, other people looking to buy a business and therefore looking, looking for funding from it. And the prices and the valuations mm. are just absolutely fucking bonkers. Yeah. Um, and... You know, I mean, I never get deep enough into the conversations to understand if these guys are just, you know, pitching you high to get you excited and then they'll chip you along or if it's just a fee based business because they try and take a couple of grand off everyone as, as a listing fee. I mean, I mean, is the value for someone who wants to acquire businesses to go and make relationships with business agents? No. Um, <laughs> that was that um, was quick and short. Next question. Yeah. So bro- bro- brokers should always carry a pot plant with them to compensate for their waste of oxygen on the planet. Um, that really um, look. There are some good. There are some good uh, business brokers, and I've met a few who um, you know who do buck the trend. But ninety nine percent of that industry is um, incredibly scammy. Um, basically, they're their business model is selling listings. They charge you a fee up front, anything from a couple of grand to 40 grand up front to list your business. It's those listing fees that keep the lights on. Um, And so they will tell you anything to get you listed. And it's a bit like, I don't know if you've ever advertised your car. You get those people who ring you up and go, hey, I've got a buyer for your car. He's sitting here with a bag of cash. All you need to do is register with us. It's $39.99 and we'll put your ad up and I'll introduce you to him. You know, it's it's a fucking scam. It's bullshit. It's the oldest one in the book. And yet they get away with it again and again and again. And their contracts are quite punitive. So what happens is... They sign you up, do fuck all, and you find a buyer and they get paid because of the contract they've, they've signed you into. Um, and so, you know, from their perspective, they're selling listings. If they accidentally sell a business, it's a bonus. Um, but uh, And it's literally, it's literally as bad as just selling the listing. It, it's not even... Well, well they, the, will, they the, will mail their database and that will, that will generate a, a half a dozen tire kickers that makes you feel like they're doing a good job. And they'll probably list it on businessesforsale.com, which you can do for 39 quid. Um, and that will get another bunch of tire kickers, um, or probably people that have watched my content but haven't done the course yet. <laughs> so we'll, see, uh, I see we'll a bring lot, them up and try and buy them for a pound. I see a lot with pubs and leisure properties as well, because I mean, obviously that, that's a, that's a core business for me, and, and, and always and always has been. Yeah. And um, yeah, if, if you ever see a pub for sale with the likes of a you know an Ernest Young or, or, or someone like that, you know you always know there's no point even engaging with this buyer, yeah. this seller rather, because he's had his expectations so ridiculously set high. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, if I buy pubs and bars, you know, it's from the likes of a, a Florets or a Christie's, you know, like a, a, mm. a, a credible industry specialist who, you know, who, who offers a price, yeah. which is, which is you know, realistic my, to the market. My, my advice to all people when they come into the Harbour Club is, um, uh, I mean, you can use brokers. It, let, let's say you're inexperienced when it comes to, you don't know any of the, the terminology, you know, things like what's EBITDA, what's P&L, what's, you know, if you don't know the, this kind of uh, terminology um, and, and M&A terminology particularly, and you don't understand accounts and looking at accounts and things like that, then by all means, sign up to a broker and get bombarded with shit. Um, that you can analyze and look at and get used to the language because that it will he- help your education in terms of just getting you from zero to uh, sounding a little bit like you know what you're talking about. So, um, you know, by all means, register with the broker and get some uh, get some information. But in terms of actually identifying a deal, the best thing you can do is, you know, think about the industry that you're going to be acquiring in. It needs to be an industry where you can build rapport and empathy with the business owner. So it helps if you know a little bit about the industry or perhaps some of the key characters in that industry or the latest scandal that's gone on in that industry because that's going to really help you in that in that rapport building part of the of the process when you first meet people so pick the industry and then just set yourself a goal of speaking to business owners in that industry hit them up on linkedin go to their you know their conferences and shows that relate to that industry and just meet as many business owners in that space as you can no agenda around buying their company you can say that you're an investor in that industry and you're looking for opportunities to to invest that's a great way of getting people to talk to you 
Um, but Jace, basically just go and do fact finding, find out what the pain points are, find out where the challenges are. And you'll be amazed from those open conversations, how many of them would be for sale under the right circumstances, or how many of them actually have synergistic problems. So you'll find, you know, maybe one has a young, hungry management team, but it's still quite a small company, and they aggressively want to grow. And there'll be another one that's really big, and it's got a 70 year old owner who really wants to move on, but can't find anyone to run the business. Well, obviously, if you put those two together, you've got a young hungry management team that could take over running his business and solve the succession so you know that's a potential merger and a merger is probably the simplest no money down uh, strategy to execute because a merger is an acquisition where you use shares to acquire a company instead of cash so by effectively using the shares of one company to buy the other one you uh, yeah you create a new co and then again that becomes more sellable because you've got something bigger now that you can go out and sell so yeah